The small town of Caravel, Florida is the destination of the next episode of Painting and Travel. Sarah boards an historic Gulf Coast schooner, while Roger sets up his easel and paints a scene from the wharf. Today, Sarah and I are in Carabel, Florida. This is on the west coast of Florida. The Gulf of Mexico is right out there, and we're up in the panhandle of Florida. This beautiful scene here is on the Carabel River, and I have an 11 by 14 inch piece of masonite covered with gesso, of course, and I've stained it with some burnt sienna, as I often do. I was here a little bit earlier, and I made an accurate drawing of this a scene that I'm going to paint. I'm using charcoal to sketch this, and I want to put a few more details in here just so I know where I'm going in the painting. And while I'm doing this, I think this would be a good time for Sarah to show you around Carabelle and also this beautiful sloop over here. I'm sitting here with Cal Allen, and we're on the vessel that's also considered a National Historic Museum. This is the Governor Stone. Well, thank you, Sarah. Welcome to the Governor Stone 1877 Gulf Coast schooner, and there were thousands built back in that year. Uh, this, as far as we know, is the only survivor. Really? And it's been restored, it's been sunk, it's been beached by hurricanes, and uh, it's gone through several owners, and now then it has been retired and, as a museum piece. Well, why is this so lucky that people have loved it enough to rescue it and rehabilitate it? Well, it's so unique, I think. Uh, you know, and in, in down here, in the, the, these kind of boats are very popular up in north, especially in Chesapeake Bay. But it's very unique for Florida. And it's difficult to preserve wooden boats in our salt water because of uh, worms and things that like to eat the wood. But this boat was made out of heart pine, yellow pine, and, and old growth cypress and juniper and cedar. And so those woods have been very resistant to any kind of the decay and rot, although there have been replacements of parts. Well, Cal, it's always a joy to come to Carabelle in this great little town, which has only, um, what, 2,000 residents? Uh, about 1,500 right now. 1,500, perfect. Yeah. And uh, it uh, has an old history. At one time, it was a very thriving community with the lumber industry. Mm -hmm. Right across the river was a lumber mill. Uh, talking about the cypress and the pine. They would bring it down the river and process it here. Yes. Uh, the ships came from Europe uh, to pick up cargo here. They would leave their ballast rocks out at the bay, come in and load up, and then go back out. And we saw some of those the other day when we were out. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so nice to hear about the town and, and to sit on this nice boat and have a chat with you. And I think I'll walk downtown a little later on and look around. Yes, uh, and we do have a police station that's well worth seeing, too, downtown. Okay, I'll make a point to look at it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great to see Enjoy you. Enjoy it while you're here, please. Will do, okay. The riverfront where the Governor's Stone is moored has a large deck and boardwalk where you can fish or picnic or plein air paint. The parking is free. Carabelle's Crooked River Lighthouse is fun to walk around. It's one of Florida's 30 lighthouses and a great subject to paint. You're always close to the water here, and you can easily see it because there are no high-rise hotels blocking the view. I wish more of Florida had followed this example. This is an excellent area for shrimp production. I can attest to that. <laughs> You've probably eaten one of the local restaurants and had our shrimp. Many times. Oh, great, great. A number of times when we've come to the Panhandle, uh -huh. which is always a treat because this is, in a sense, a place time has forgotten. <laughs> we haven't forgotten it because once you've been here, you really want to come back. That's right. It's just such a joy to find a, a laid back, uh, kind of small town feeling. There's so many places you can put a boat here and fish. We're water oriented. We love our waterways and there's always interesting places to go. The Barrier Islands offer a lot of places to get out of the, out of the wind and uh, lots of beaches. I like the 1950s look and pace of the downtown, and this cafe is a good place to have a cup of coffee and meet people. 
I hope we can come back for the Riverfront Festival and another fishing and nature adventure. We loved spending time here. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of great activities and places to see around Carabell, great for painters. Well, I'm going to get started on this painting right now. I've just blocked this in with charcoal. I want to get my drawing as accurate as I can because there's so much going on here. I want to keep the drawing fairly tight because I, when I get my big brush strokes going on there, I know I'm going to lose some of this, but at least I'll have a road map as to where to go and I won't have to try and figure out drawing with my brush. I've, I've figured it out all with my charcoal first. Well, I'm using acrylics today. I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and my last color is Indian yellow. Just three colors today. I could add more later. I always say that, but generally I just stay with these three colors. Today I have almost all brand new brushes with me and the reason is I want good brushes with sharp chisel points on them because there's so many angular uh, details here. These buildings are square, the pier and so on, so I want some good sharp points on these brushes. These are brights, these are flat brushes and I have one small pointed brush. These range from a number two bright, a flat brush, up to about a number six and I have a pointed brush. I also have a three quarter inch flat brush here too. Start by mixing my dark colors and I'll put these trees in the background from dark to light. I'm going to lose a lot of this drawing as I go, but since I did an accurate drawing here to begin with, I, you know, I sort of have it in my mind where things are placed. It really helps to, to get a, a good start and I don't, won't have to really worry about the composition. I know what's going where, even if I do lose some of these lines. Right now I'm more concerned with the values than I am the colors, but I am going to keep these trees warm back here because then I'm going to put some greens over these warm trees and the, the combination of the warm underneath and the green on top will make the green stand out even better. Uh, red and green are of course opposite colors and a little bit of green over that red will make it glow, glow nicely. I always bring this atomizer with me. It's a very important tool uh, when painting with acrylics. I just spray my board slightly and that way this paint will flow easily over my my canvas. I'm almost using this like watercolor right at the moment. Here's the advantage of the, a new brush. I can even though this is one of the larger brushes I have here since it's a new brush I have a nice chisel point on it. I can get a fairly thin line even with this large brush. Since I have this drawing pretty well laid out it's it's almost like paint by number at this point. I'm just filling in a lot of these areas, get all this established. I'm not going to play with the water too much right now because uh, as the sun comes up and as the wind changes, it's, go it's all going to look different. So I'm going to, I think I'll block in the structures first. Now that house back there in the far distance is yellow or a very pale yellow but it's not catching a lot of the sunlight right now. So I have to, uh, I can't just mix yellow and white and expect that to work. It's really more gray than it is anything, but it leans towards yellow. So I'll mix up this gray color. Now I really won't know if this is the right color or not until I get more colors on there because one color affects all the other colors. As I put more colors on here, this may end up looking too green. I think it probably will. At this point, I don't think it really matters what I put on the canvas next. So I'm just going to continue with the, uh, the darks basically here, put this roof in and I'll make this roof much darker than uh, it's going to end up. But there are shadows where those ribs go on the roof. So I want those areas dark. And then when this dries, I'll put the lighter reds over that. I like the little shape of this. Uh, this roof is a bit darker than the yellow on the house. We'll put it in. I'll add just a touch of white in that. If the color is not quite right, but the value is good, uh, it'll uh, pass inspection. But I have to get the values right. The values are more important than the colors. Colors can be off slightly and uh, the painting will still work, but the values have to be pretty accurate. 
Here we have the seawall, and it's a white, whitish seawall, but of course it's in shadow too, so it's not going to be white, it's going to be gray, and it's going to catch a lot of the light from the sky and the water, so it will lean towards blue. So this value will be darker than white, of course. Earlier the sky was a little bit warmer, now as the sun goes up the sky gets bluer and cooler. It's very, very blue. I'm going to put a touch of yellow in this sky right down here near the horizon because it's the sky is going to get warmer down here by the horizon. I like to use a, a lot of paint when I paint light areas. When I paint dark areas the paint can be much thinner but these light areas they need a lot of pigment. They need, need some body to them and also with acrylics. Acrylics don't cover as nearly as well as oils do. So something like this sky just have to put in, put on quite a bit of paint for it to cover. Often I have to go back and uh, paint the sky over a second time just simply because it doesn't cover very well. Now I'll blend these colors together by just making my strokes go different directions. That will blend everything together here. Well, the featured part of this painting is this small house here. It's, of course, a white building, but it's in shadow. It's not getting lit by the sun. So it's getting its, all its light from the sky and the water. So it's, <laughs> if I squint my eyes, it's very close to being the same color as the, as the sky up here, maybe just a bit darker. So I'll take my sky color here, just add some more color to it. Here's where this good pointed brush comes in handy. Now I can tell right off right now, since I've laid in these other colors, this is not the right color, so I'll have to change that one. There's always a lot of adjustment that goes on during this process of, of doing a painting. There's no recipe for this. It's not like putting in a pinch of this or a pinch of that and having it come out right. As this painting bakes, it, uh, <laughs> it always needs new ingredients. Oh, this green bothers me. Let me change that real quickly. This is dry already. So that's a real good advantage of the acrylics. I'm keeping the values the same. See, this, the value of this color here is the same value as this, just a different, uh, different color. Same value, different color. Well, I think all this burnt sienna color is really affecting the way I'm thinking about these colors here. So it's probably time to get this blocked in. I think what I'm going to do is use, it, use some transparent colors just to lay some colors in here as a wash. And if I'm lucky, I won't lose all my drawing there. I'll have enough left to use as a guide as to what I need to put in there as details. Now I sketched this in with charcoal, but after I sketched it in with charcoal, I went over it certain areas with a bit of pencil. And the uh, charcoal is being uh, brushed away with the, the paints and the brush here. But some of my pencil lines are remaining, so uh, that's what I did to preserve my drawing, even though I started out by drawing this with charcoal. And yeah, now see these posts that I put in here earlier? Totally dry. So I can go over this with a wash of color, and it's not going to destroy those posts in there. Well, it looks pretty bad right now, but this is just the foundation. This is just the start of the painting. This is just to get the basics down and get the painting covered with something, with some kind of paint to begin with. And now I think I'll start working on the details. The whole painting's covered. Now it's time for me to start putting in darks, lights, contrasts. Now it's interesting about reflections in water because horizontal reflections in water pretty much disappear. They just don't show up very well. But vertical objects like these posts, they always show up much better than horizontal items. I can't see the dock very much as far as a reflection here in the water. It's very vague, but these posts are very distinctive. So vertical objects always show up much more than horizontal objects. Here, I'll just add this post down here. Here we've got a couple tall posts right here. And we'll see that the reflection really shows up a good bit down into the water there. 
Here we have the railing to the, the dock. I'm going to make this railing kind of dark here, and then I'm going to place some negative areas to accentuate the posts. So I'll just paint this dark to begin with. I'll keep my lines vertical, but then I'm going to go in when that dries and put some fine little negative areas showing the background behind these posts. So I'm not really painting the posts right now. I'm painting the post as a, as a solid block of color with some vertical strokes. And then we'll put those negative areas in. I try and work a painting kind of all at once to get the whole thing going at once. So now this is dry here. I'll spray this again and we'll put some lighter blue on there. What I want to try and accomplish here is a, sort of a nice contrast between the darks and the lights. And I want to accomplish those by using these negative areas. So I'm painting, be painting between these posts. Now I'll start chipping away here. And what we'll end up with is, is some posts. I could paint these posts over the, uh, the water, but it just feels more like a painting to me to use these negative areas. As you can see, these are starting to appear. You couldn't really determine what they were before, but as I carve away at these, I'll expose those posts. Now, I haven't gotten into this yet, but another strange thing about reflections in water is that dark objects will reflect lighter and light objects will reflect darker. So this white house is going to reflect darker down here in the water. But those dark posts are going to reflect a little bit lighter in the water. It uh, was to my advantage to start out with this burnt sienna undertone as well, because a lot of this burnt sienna can peek through my painting. And if I had a, a stark white board here to begin with, it would be much harder. I would really have to cover every inch of this right now as it is with the burnt sienna as a base to start with. I can let some of that show through, just sort of glow through. Now the reflections down here, I want to continue that blue on down, but I want it to be a little bit softer because the water is of course moving. So I'll take my same blue and since this is a bit damp, I'll bring this down and, and since it's wet, it tends to flow out my paints just slightly so I don't get a terribly hard edge on that. There, it's really starting to, to build now. I'm always in kind of a discouraging mood often when I start a painting because paintings always have to start out as being so basic, you know? It's just very crude almost. But uh, the ability to stick with a painting and uh, f fight it out uh, often has its rewards. So. Uh, even when I start many of these programs, I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? This is a, a really hard subject and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to pull it off or not. But uh, persistence is a, a big part of being a painter, just not, not giving up. That's not to say that uh, you keep battling with a painting all the time uh, because sometimes it's best to leave things, move on to something else. But uh, I try and stop painting when I just don't know what else to do with it. Uh, I feel my limitations on that. And although maybe I think the painting could be better in many ways, if I don't know how to do it, I, I often just stop and move on to something else. A painting that's brought to a certain point, if you try and bring it beyond that point, uh, it gets worse rather than better. You see, we have this house reflecting down here. So right down here, we'll get the, this line where the house starts to reflect, right there. I'll take this color and drag it through this, where this house is. A few ripples back down through there. Maybe another ripple or two right across here building this up in layer after layer after layer. These trees are too dark now, and I knew they would be too dark, but uh, they are dry back there. 
And now I can put a little bit of distance between me and these trees. I have the dark, that warm dark. Now I'm going to light, lay in some lighter greens over this. And I'll let some of that warm dark color show through. I'm going to mix some alizarin crimson and Indian yellow with a touch of white. Now I'll put the uh, ribs in here with this roof. Here again, I'm working with negative areas. I'm leaving the dark areas. Now, it could be done in another way. I could paint these dark ribs in there, but I love to play with these negative areas. So we'll just put these ribs in, leave the ribs and paint the, the slats there of the, the roof. Now with my very small pointed brush, I'm going to again work with negative areas and try and bring out these posts here on the dock. Some of these will be light blue color because I'll be able to see the water behind them. I'll mix up that blue color and just with a steady hand, this is where a good pointed brush is imperative. Put in these the negative areas between these posts. Now what I'm left with is the post with a bit of water showing through. Well I don't want to forget the governor's stone over there. It's a it's a beautiful boat so we'll just put a little indication of that. And a lot of that is showing up behind these fence posts. So I'll just take some white, put that in there. Really not gonna be able to describe that boat very much, except for the masts. And I carry a small ruler with me, just for things like this. And the trick to doing a nice straight line is to have not only a good brush, but to load the brush up and have the paint on the brush not terribly thick, to have it thinned out just a bit. I'm just using this ruler as a guide. I'm not going to put in the rigging now. I'll do that when we get back to the studio. Here we'll add a few more fence posts. I say I'm adding the fence posts, but actually I'm adding the water. I'm mixing up a lighter color because I'm not seeing the water in here. I'm seeing other parts of the pier. I'm going to put out some cadmium red light because the alizarin crimson is just not doing the job for me here on this roof. So I'm going to mix some of my cadmium red light with a touch of blue and just paint this whole area here. I'm going to lose some of those darks, but I can put them back in again. I have a shadow that's uh, finding its way right under this ridge here of the, the roof line. Now, I don't want a hard line because there's no hard light on this side of the house. So after I put that in, I'll just drag this brush over this and soften that hard edge. Now, even though there's no strong light coming across this building, I think I'm going to invent some and put some in there. I'm just going to drag a bit of sunlight right across here. And I can show some of that reflection here too in the water. And we'll do the same thing with the roof. Now, I Again, we'll fill these in one more time with some lighter red, some bright color, because this is really kind of where I want the focus of my painting. There, that kind of brings some more attention to this area here. I can see this house is reflecting some light back onto the seawall right in this area. So I'll we'll pick up on that and make that a little bit lighter right there. I'll put a few rocks down here on the beach. I want to be careful to not bring too much attention to these rocks. And as I put these in, I want them to be all different sizes and different shapes. I don't want to vary them a whole lot, but just enough so they all don't look alike. Well, if you can do it, it's always great to paint on location, paint outside, because now that I'm here on the Carabelle River, I've got to experience this, I've got to feel it, I've got to see the colors firsthand. I'm going to take some photographs now. We'll take it back into the studio and put some finishing touches on it. Well, I'm back in the studio now, and as I look at this painting, I can see a few things that need to be changed. The first thing I notice in this painting is right back here. These trees seem to be too dark. They've come too far forward, so I'm going to lighten these trees and try and put some atmosphere in between me and this background. I'm using ultramarine blue, Indian yellow, some cadmium yellow, and of course some white to keep that light. Just spray my board. That will let my paint flow on here a bit easier. By making this lighter, helps to define the edge of this house here by contrast. I'll still let some of the burnt sienna color show through these trees because it gives a nice warmth to the painting. Some sky color right on the top of these trees will help to soften that edge. 
And I'll finish the trees by putting in a few sky holes. And I want to be sure I keep them nice and soft. I think the next step might be working on the roof of this house and bringing that forward a bit. And for that, I'm going to put out some cadmium red light. And with a small brush, I'll put in some details. By enhancing this light coming across the building, it gave me a nice chance to add some bright red on those shutters. Now with a very fine brush, I'm just suggesting a few boards that run across here horizontally. Well, I think that should finish this house. The next step is to work on all these negative areas in these fence posts. And right in here, I can put these negative spaces between the posts. There's a park right here, and by adding some green, I can define the edge of this building and make something of this dark space in here. Well, I think this building right here in the background is too warm. It's coming forward too much, so I'm going to mix up some light blue and put a wash over this to see if I can push that back. And I'm just going to apply this paint rather thin. I'll spray my board so this paint slides over this easily. Well, I think that's going to finish this painting. Sarah and I had a great time at Carabelle and the nearby towns of Apalachicola, St. George Island, and East Point. It's a great place to visit, to relax, and especially to paint. Now let's take one last final look at this painting. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.